Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day everyone. Uh, so today we continue our part 2 water in soil. Still discuss the similar topic which is uh, water stress, effective stress and poor water pressure. So I hope you already revise some of the uh, lecture that have been carried out last time. Uh, and also um, go through uh, the different condition of the um, soils which is uh, last time we already covered the green field condition with only last soil layer is saturated and I ask you to review on flood condition and also green field condition but uh, with all soil layer is in saturated condition and inshallah um, we also will cover the soil condition with white surcharge and soil with capillary effects okay. so i believe you still remember uh, last time we already go through this uh, example and i hope you already obtained the results uh, here for oh, the stress at D, stress at layer D, uh, or at depth of 1 plus 0 0.5 plus 2, 3.5 meter below the ground surface. Uh, at depth of 3.5 meter below below the ground surface, the stress D, uh, the effective stress of D is 51.88 kN per meter square, kN per meter square or kilopascal. And alternatively, we can calculate, in short, if we're interested uh, to know effective stress at layer D, so we can just directly calculate gamma dry for layer 1, gamma bulk for layer 2, gamma saturated for layer 3, minus the um, pore water pressure at uh, layer 3, so we, we will obtain similar value, 51.88 kilopascal. Uh, so next is about um, other condition, but this time is a saturated, a fully saturated soil condition with the uh, groundwater table at the earth surface. Groundwater table at the earth surface. So I believe you already try this um, um, exercise, but just want to mention to you that in here we have. Um, Two different uh, value, gamma dry and gamma saturated. So, um, uh, similarly for the saturated silty clay, you are given two different value, gamma bulk and also gamma saturated. And maintain for the uh, layer three, you will have only the uh, unit weight of saturated. So, which one to be used in this condition? Okay, it, it is actually a straight cut. Uh, answers due to the groundwater table is at the surface of the soil so all the total stress need to use gamma saturated gamma saturated so gamma saturated at stress b at uh, for the stress, total stress at, at b um, gamma saturated times lay, uh, height of layer 1 equal to 20 uh, whereas for Stress, uh, total stress at C, so gamma saturated H1 plus gamma saturated H2. Uh, and uh, you will obtain 30.5 kN per meter square. Well, similarly, you have to do for D. And then, um, uh, I think you have to check this one because I, I, I believe this is a uh, uh, previous value. So, you have to do gamma saturated H1 plus gamma saturated H2 plus gamma saturated H3 for this layer. And then, um, okay, since we have a ground table at the surface, so we have to calculate uh, ground table for each layer. Okay, so first, of course, at the ground table of, at, at the paratic surface, so the power pressure is equal to zero. 
then here uh, at the uh, proper, proper pressure at B so gamma uh, weight uh, gamma water time H1 so you get 9.81 and similarly you do for layer 2 and also layer 3 and uh, so over here you just need to minus the effect to, to obtain the to obtain the effective stress total stress minus the pore water pressure so you do for the rest and you will get the value of uh, effective stress at D so uh, let's say this is a correct value so when you compare to the previous questions previous exercise that we do so with the higher groundwater table the effective stress that we have is much smaller because previously we do we got 58.51.88 kilopascal but for the groundwater table at the surface we got the effective stress at D is much smaller which is 37.17 so um, we can see here the effective stress concept that I mentioned earlier in the um, uh, last week um, lecture so we know that with the increment of the pore water pressure in the soil so it will reduce the uh, effective stress um, so I just want to, to ask you is this uh, a good condition or a bad condition is the uh, is it the uh, reduction of the effective stress will lead to a, to a stable condition or will lead to the much uh, uh, adverse condition okay, you have to check about that okay so next um, now I want to share with you the total stress condition with the surface surcharge load yes we know that uh, actually in the soil design uh, in the geotechnical uh, design structure usually at the top of the ground is uh, we have uh, some sort of like building piling, uh, structures and so on. So um, all of them uh, are considered as a surface surcharge load equal to Q which is Q usually in the unit of kilonewton per meter square or easily we can uh, write kilo, kilo pascal K, um, small k uh, capital P and small a kilo pascal okay um uh, this surface surcharge load uh, the building piling structures and so on will increase the total stress the stress vertical uh, below below the ground okay. but there will be there will be a two different scenario which is uh, for the surcharge loading that have extensively wide um, so we can consider that uh, the increment of the total stress is constant with the depth and equal to the magnitude of the surcharge and equal to the magnitude of the surcharge so anything that apply at the top of the ground is uh, taken as it is so in uh, it is a shortcut uh, solution which is vertical total stress at any depth of H uh, the uh, stress V is equal to gamma times height plus the surcharge load okay but for the other uh, condition for a narrow surcharge so as example under a strip or a pad foundations um, so they will induce a vertical a vertical total stress uh, that which always decrease um, with the depth and also the horizontal distance from the load so the deeper they go uh, the lesser they are and the the the, uh, the horizontal it, it goes uh, it becomes much more lesser so let's say if we interested to obtain the stress effective stress as at this location under a pet foundation like this one um, so actually it's not a straightforward uh, as we take in the Q we have to um, solve the, the Q value 
uh, using the suitable stress distribution theory which is uh, not covered in this soil mechanic but you will see this in uh, geotechnic one so uh, as example you can use uh, Mosinex theory or Fadim theory or 1 to 2 uh, ratio method uh, so, um, uh, so uh, in our class I just uh, focus on the uh, white surcharge we assume that any given uh, surcharge or loading in here uh, considered as a white surcharge okay um as i mentioned before the q uh, sh shall be uh, in the unit of kilonewton per meter square so therefore if you are given a uh, problems that given to you uh, capital q equal to 400 kilonewton and also uh, an area so area actually representing an area of the bottom of the building that could that um, contact have a contact to the uh, ground surface so you have to divide this value and you get uh, the uh, answer so let's say in this case 400 uh, divide to 20 so easily you get 1 20, 20 kilonewton per meter square so when you are calculating the total stress uh, let's say I want to calculate this is line of total stress so every time I want to calculate uh, stress at layer A B so I have to uh, add the Q value so usually the Q value starting at somewhere with the values Previously, it's usually uh, usually answered as a zero, but with a surcharge, so you have start with a value. So for total stress at A at the surface of uh, Earth, so easily this is twenty. Twenty, and then at below eighteen times one plus twenty, and uh, you follow until calculate. So the C and also D. And for the pore pressure, just calculate as a usual one. And for effective stress, as the effective stress is um, equal to total stress minus uh, pore pressure. So you have to uh, minus 20 minus 0. So at the first place, you also get 20. At the stress at A. And then you follow uh, value of here, minus 0, also you get the value. So let's see another example that I prepare here. So this is Q, uh, surcharge loading uh, equal to 18.3 newton per meter square with a similar soil profile, similar groundwater table. So this is the solution. So, as I mentioned be, uh, before, as the Q just now is 18, so this is 18 kN per meter square. All the units in the in the stress diagram is in kN per meter square. So, this is 18, so 18 plus 18 times 1 for the layer B, uh, 36, uh, followed by stress, total stress at C, total stress at D, and power pressure and effective stress so you will get the answer you may try this one later okay uh, so next is uh, the condition in flood flooding so i will continue in next video inshallah see you